Ladies and gentlemen on the Shred Gaming Twitter.com video, let us discuss the Xbox One's operating systems and drivers a little bit, shall we? So, I'm sure you may have heard it through the grapevine by now, but Microsoft aren't completely satisfied with the voice recognition and performance yet of their system. Uh, listening to user feedback, they have indeed started to improve that. You can check out Amata's video on this very channel if you want more information on that. However, they've also started to speak about the operating system and an industry insider known as Fue, uh, that's T-H-U-W-A-Y, has recently started to comment on this. Now, I've also done this in articles, so you can read the tweets directly and I've given all the links and all the other bits and pieces you'd expect. Um, he said, and I quote, I am trying to get a good read on when the next Xbox One driver update happens. Should mean great things. Sometime in the next few weeks. He also pointed out, make no mistake about it, the team at Redmond working on the Xbox OS are probably the best OS programmers in the world. He also pointed out that in regards to the memory situation, I'm sure some of you may be aware that recent comments of developers saying, well, you know, this amount of memory is great and all, but we're going to run out of it eventually. And he's clarified on this, and he has said, I should leave a footnote. Developers who made RAM comments were not complaining, only giving a straight answer. Indeed, developers are very happy with these next-gen machines, but let's not delude ourselves into thinking developer ambitions stop at 6 gigabytes of RAM. Right, first of all, let's just address the last part. I'm ending the quote, of course. So 6 gigabytes of RAM, what the hell's going on there? Well, obviously, we're talking about the amount of RAM that is available to games developers. Because, for example, these machines could have 500 gigabytes of RAM. Obviously, they, you know, that'd be very difficult for them to have, but let's just, you know, use silly figures and just say it did. Well, if you've only got one gigabyte available for games, then to all intents and purposes, all you've got is one gigabyte of RAM for games. That's it. You know, the 499 can go jump. In this case, there's eight gigabytes total for both systems. However, roughly six gigabytes is available for games developers, right? Now, here's the whole point and there's two specific areas this is addressing the first is the drivers now drivers are pretty simple they basically tell the operating system how do you control the piece of hardware that is in the machine so in other words okay how does the graphics card handle how does the sound work and so on and so forth and this is really important because if the drivers blow they're not going to be able to perform as well as what you'd expect now, in the case of PCs, for example, um, you can get instances of huge performance boosts, like 10 to 30%, depending entirely on what drivers update, what you know, what what games they are, and so on. Now, that doesn't mean, of course, that we're going to be seeing the 1.32 teflops of computer power inside the Xbox One suddenly jumping by like 10 or 20% or something. It, you know, we're not saying that. And, you know, the relative specs of the machine remain the same. But what it does mean is that developers will be able to much better utilize the hardware that's in there. Perhaps also we're going to see improvements regarding the Xbox One's um, memory utilization, particularly ESRAM. Because as far as what I understand it, a lot of that right now is manual. In other words, developers have to do a lot of manual flashing of the ESRAM, which isn't ideal. So I guess we're going to have to see a lot of this, of course, is also going to depend on the SDKs of developers. But honestly, the SDKs, um, they're going to improve over time. As for the memory, now, obviously, Microsoft can't ship another, you know, 8 gigs of RAM into the systems, right? This has been one of the things, actually, that there was, a, it, there was an interview a couple of months back, and developers of the Xbox One were saying that, oh, you know what? You know, it allows us to put more memory in for cheaper, you know, um, compared to GDDR5, which is, of course, inside the Sony's PlayStation 4. And when I heard that, I, I actually really didn't like that answer because it's like, okay, well, you didn't, right? There's no point in saying, well, we can. That's like me saying, well, I could give you 
a million pounds because I've, I'm a billionaire, but I'm not a billionaire. I really wish I was, but you know, let's just say for, say for the sake of argument, I was. Hey, you know what? I, I could be, but I'm not going to give you it. Now, obviously, that's just being silly because RAM it doesn't grow on trees and it's not free. But what I'm saying is, I don't like those type of answers. And if Microsoft had bitten the bullet a little bit and added more memory, it would have been an interesting, I'm not saying it would have been perfect, but it would have been interesting to see what would have happened if the Xbox One had, say, 16 gigabytes of RAM, that's, let's say, 12 gigabytes available for games, and let's say, 4 reserved for the OS, versus the PlayStation 4's 8 gigabytes of GDDR5. I just think that would have been made for a very interesting console generation, just to see how and what developers would, A, do with that um, disparity, and B, you know, what would the games actually look like? Would there be a real difference? It would been I think that'd be kind of interesting from everyone's perspective. Regardless, that's not what happened. And so we have this situation where both machines are pretty much at a stalemate. Now we do know that the footprint of the operating system, in other words, how much memory the operating system is reserving. So let's assume that we're using the figure of 8 gigabytes and 6. So 6 gigabytes is available to games developers. That means four, uh, 2 gigabytes is available, is basically the memory footprint of the operating system. Now, with Sony, it's a lot more complicated because of their flexible memory. And that's outside the scope of this video because it's a Microsoft centric video. But in regards to Xbox, they obviously have a, a very interesting operating system setup. And yes, it's I actually quite like the idea behind it. Um, I think it's perhaps a little bit complicated, and I believe that it's going to make updates tricky, but at the same time it could be really good, because let's say they make an update to, say, oh, I don't know, the app OS. They can do pretty much whatever they like. It's not going to break games, which is very good, right? It means that you're going to get much better compatibility. And obviously, if they do manage to reduce the memory footprint, that's going to be great. However, of course, they also need to be careful because apps require finite amounts of memory as well. Anyway, there's not that much information um, exactly what these drive updates are going to do. Hopefully, they're going to improve the graphics performance a little bit. I mean, I, you know... I'm invariably going to get the question asked if I don't um, say this now. But this does not mean that we're going to be seeing Xbox One games running suddenly all at 1080p at 60 frames per second. Because, you know, uh, it just it's just not feasible. Uh, it's not going to happen on PlayStation 4 either. This is just, you know, brutally honest. It's just a simple case of finite specs. But what it will mean is we're going to be getting hopefully higher frame rates, maybe better looking graphics. Um, especially down the line, it might make very few differences now, but what it might mean as well is the machine maybe loads a little bit faster, which, from what I understand, I don't own an Xbox One, it's on my buy list for early next year, but from all the reports and the experiences I've had, it does seem that the machine is a little sluggish loading, which is obviously not ideal. I mean, who wants to go through an installer? on games so hopefully microsoft can somewhat resolve that the connect interface is good but you know the voice commands could certainly be better is what it comes down to i mean you can always improve on something um you know if you can improve on it then what's the point oh sorry guys that was my encoder i'm encoding another video in the background i apologize normally i mute that uh anyway uh, it's been a bit of an itsy bitsy video. It's just there's so little information exactly what they're working on. It's quite difficult to understand. Having said that, I say that two minutes after I upload this video, there'll be an absolute slew of information. Just it's just sod's law. Anyway, um, hopefully you enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.